The early 80s was a time of innocence. You could leave the window open at night while you slept, leave your doors unlocked. You could let the children go outside and play unsupervised. Young women could go for a jog in the park without worrying about anyone bothering them. In general, no one had to have an awareness of their surroundings. Even if you didn't know your neighbor, you still cared about them. You watched out for one another. You were familiar with each other's routines. There was a real sense of community. People lived by a code of decency. Which begs the question, who would attack a 35-year-old mother of three on the night of January 3rd, 1981 in Burlington, Vermont, and leave her to die? Angela Louise Gage was born in England in 1945. She was the first child of a wartime marriage between Royal Canadian Air Force bomber pilot Wesley Gage and his wife Louise, a member of the Canadian Women's Auxiliary Air Force. The Gages soon moved back to Canada and settled in Stanbridge East. They had four more children, three boys and another girl. Angela was a good student who attended college for two years and obtained her teaching certificate. She began dating Jerry Belial, a cement truck driver in the mid-1960s after meeting him at a dance hall in Bedford, Quebec. They were married in 1968 and moved into a trailer in Swanton. Angela's brother Colin said, I thought that Jerry was a pretty good fellow. We all liked him. He was a down-to-earth individual and a very hard worker. Angela and Jerry had three children. Angela taught in St. Albans and began taking graduate school courses in the University of Vermont Psychology Department. She was a really good student and a delightful person her former psychology professor, Richard Muster, recalled. While Angela was excelling in the education field, her husband, Jerry, was busy building a successful cement pouring business and constructing a $70,000 home to replace the trailer. They were a busy couple, progressing in life at a steady pace. They also bought a camp on Le Pen's Bay on Lake Champlain but by then, they began to have problems. By, nine, by, 17, eight, by 1978, after trying to make the marriage work several times, they separated. Angela's friends said that Angela began to fear for her safety, especially after the Swanton home mysteriously burned in 1979 and the Le Pen's Bay camp she received in the divorce settlement was vandalized in 1980. Her brother stated, I think Jerry did not have eyes for anyone else, but I think my sister Angela did. Jerry had a hard time with Angela not being there for him anymore. Court records from the divorce case revealed that at the time Angela died, she was attempting to have the couple's divorce case reopened, seeking child support money from Gerald and a change in the valuation for the vandalized camp. The hearing for her request had been scheduled for January 14, 1981, 11 days after she was killed. The authorities soon began to focus on Gerald as a prime suspect and obtained a search warrant to seize all the firearms from his home. He had a solid alibi for his whereabouts the night his ex-wife was gunned down. He was home with the kids, whom he had picked up from her during a prearranged meeting in the parking lot of the University of Vermont around 6 p.m. Friday, January 2nd, 1981. In his own words, Gerald said, I went right home after picking them up. Every other weekend, she would bring them to me at the old Goldsbrand parking lot. I never spoke to her. The police evidence backs up his claim, his statements. Angela and Gerald's daughter, Selena, backed up his statement as well. She was not on speaking terms with her father at the time of the article I found on this case was, was written in 2006, I believe. I don't know if things are still this way now, but that's how it was back then. She said that she could recall waking up in the middle of the night at the Swanton home on the evening her mother was killed and seeing her father asleep on the living room floor. I was going to the bathroom and saw him snoring like a freight train. 
I remember what time it was, 12.34 a.m. Because we had a digital clock and it's rare to see it with the numbers one, two, three, four in a row like that. Patrick Foley, a detective for the Burlington Police Department in 1981 and who eventually went on to be the Williston Chief of Police said he was not convinced that Gerald went home immediately after picking up the children. I don't think he went right home. I think he went someplace different. His time frame was missing something. There was a change in his routine. Evidence shows that Angela's killer waited for her hiding beside the garage. The assailant would move to their position and shoot her in the head. It seemed that the crime was committed by someone who knew Angela or at least knew her schedule because this was planned. That night she met Gerald at the parking lot, dropped the kids off to spend the night with him. Then she would go to the grocery store and then home. Foley remembers the scene like it happened yesterday. Initially, detectives thought Angela had slipped and fell hitting her head. Foley said that he knew that this was a homicide. It appeared as if she stepped out of her vehicle, then she might have lost her balance and fell and banged her head and pretty much froze to death. They cleaned off her body and noticed a speckling of blood on her cheek. Looked like a freckle or a mole, but they later found this to be blood and they knew it was not a fall based on the evidence seen. She had been shot twice once in the head and once by a shot that had grazed the top of her skull. This case is still open and being actively investigated, so Foley could not release details of the evidence found at the scene. However, based on the evidence that was located near her body, Chief Foley pointed out that it was extremely personal. Chief Foley said that the person that committed the crime knows what he is talking about when he says it's personal. Gerald said it has been hard to live under suspicion for the death of his ex-wife. It doesn't feel very good. I understand why they think that because I was the ex-husband. Gerald has since remarried and said that he had no idea who killed Angela. It's pretty strange considering everything that went on, but I don't have a freaking clue. Unfortunately, we still don't know to this day who murdered this mother, teacher, and grad student because another person questioned by the police committed suicide shortly after being interviewed by police. Was this person her murderer or did they have the key to unlocking what happened to Angela? We may never know when it comes to that individual. What we do know is that she met Gerald at the parking lot, dropped the kids off to spend the night with him. Then she would go to the grocery store and then home. The weapon used in the murder has not been recovered and police managed to find a bullet that killed her only by scooping up and melting all the snow under and around her body. Her brother wonders if the police were aggressive enough pursuing the case in the days after Angela's death. He said that it took three weeks for police to arrange an interview with Angela's boyfriend at the time. The police did a very sloppy job. He explained how three months after her death, he came, to, he came down to pick up her, his sister's car to drive it back to Quebec. It overheated outside of Burlington and when he opened the trunk to look for a container, he found bags of groceries, now rotted, that she must have purchased in the hours before she was killed. I couldn't get over that. It did not look like anything had been disturbed. It was said that the file shows that police did inspect the groceries, but couldn't offer an explanation for why they were still in the car's trunk. Angela's death was not the only tragedy to befall this family. Fires that are believed to be deliberately set struck two of Gerald's businesses in the 90s. Angela and Gerald's youngest son, Trevor, died in a car accident in 1994. 
The Lappins Bay camp burned down in 1997. Someone out there knows the missing pieces to this story. If you have any information about the death of Angela Belial, please contact your local authorities. All of this is alleged. Thanks for watching.